garden sharers from Kaikin visit, and every more defend all who are assembled in this place through Christ our Lord. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. Even unto God, my joy and gladness. You have sent him to me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people, who delivered me from the wicked and deceitful man. O Thou art God, my strength, why hast Thou delivered from me? And why art Thou so heavy, and all the enemy oppressed me? O send out Thy light and Thy truth, that they may lead me, and bring me unto Thy holy hill, and to Thy dwelling. And then I may go unto the altar of God, even unto God, my joy and gladness. And upon the heart will I give thanks unto thee, O God, my God. Why art thou so heavy, O my soul? Why art thou so disquieted within me? O good I trust in God, for I may give him thanks to the help of my countenance and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Even unto God, my joy and gladness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. I confess to Almighty God, to Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, to Blessed Michael the Archangel, Blessed John Baptist, to the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, to all the saints, and to you, brethren, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore I beg Mary, ever blessed ever Virgin, Blessed Michael the Archangel, Blessed John Baptist, the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, and all the saints. And you, my brethren, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon me, forgive me my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. I confess to Almighty God, the Blessed Mary the Virgin, the Blessed Michael the Archangel, the Blessed John the Baptist, to the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, to all the saints, and to thee, Father, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, by my fault.
Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs> Until the 
will appreciate the Lord. He will not persist as though the Most High visits him, and this just judge executes judgment. And the Lord will not delay, neither will he be patient with them. The words of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
He who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel today is a marvelous reflection on the virtue of humility. And maybe it's the culture in which we live or the strident nature of the political discourse of the current presidential election cycle, if you can call it political discourse. It's more like people shouting at each other and insulting each other without ever talking about what seems to be most important. There seems to be a great need for humility, an injection of that Christian virtue, which is fundamental to the whole Christian life, so much that it forms such a cornerstone of our Lord's own teaching and his parables. But when we think of humility, it's one of those, one of those words where over the course of time there has layered up over it all sorts of other meanings and understandings, so much so that we may have lost a sense of what it actually truly means to be humble before God and before each other. Humility sometimes sounds to us like we have to make ourselves less than what we are. We have to become smaller. We have to remain silent. We have to draw back somehow. That isn't what humility means. That's certainly not the example that our Lord himself gives us, nor as he expounds upon in the Gospel. We may sometimes think that humility is somehow passive, or it's some sort of weakness. When we look at the greatest examples of humility that we have received in the sacred scriptures, we see that it is anything but passive, and anything but weak. The prime example is, of course, our Blessed Lady in the Annunciation when the Archangel, Archangel Gabriel appears to her and says that she is to be the mother of the Son of God. Now, in art, very often we see Mary kneeling, quiet, eyes downcast, in front of the splendor of the angel. It kind of perpetuates that sense of passivity. But humanity has never been more active than that moment. In front of that offer of grace, the very offer of grace that would change the course of human history forever, that would lift us out of sin and death into the possibility of life with God, humanity shows itself by a marvelous invitation of God to be a co-operator, a co-worker with grace. Because grace cannot be forced. Salvation cannot be forced. Without Mary's yes, without the boldness of her answer, we would have been lost. There is a marvelous spiritual poem by St. Bernard of Clairvaux, which recounts the apprehension, the silence of all created order, when the moment the Archangel Gabriel says to her, you will be the mother of the Most High. What would she do? How would she respond? And he describes of birds coming to halt mid-flight, the entire choirs of angels singing to the praise and glory of God for eternity, falling silent. All of humanity, all of the earth, stops at that moment because all of humanity, all of the earth, depends on the outcome of that moment. And as the poem goes on, St. Bernard takes up the voice of creation. Be bold, be bold, O virgin. Say yes to the angel's command. Say yes to the offer of God, for our whole salvation depends upon it. The greatest moment of humility was an act of sheer boldness. Yes 
to the transformative grace of God. And she could utter that yes because she knew exactly who she was. And she understood God to be true. That's humility. To know and to embrace what is true, what is good, and what is beautiful. It's the opposite story in the gospel, isn't it? We have the, the Pharisee and we have the tax collector. Pride and humility. Humility, the tax collector, he knows he's a sinner. He doesn't try to put any varnish on it. He knows he's cheated people. He knows he's been dishonest with his own money and that with others. He's an extortioner, for lack of a better word. And he stands before God in that knowledge, and he does not try to hide it. He allows the shameful humiliation of that truth to be the only thing he places before God. Whereas the Pharisee wraps himself in cloaks and mantles of his own illusion, his own delusion that he is righteous, that he is better than everyone else. Because he's done these things, he is justified before God. And so the prayer of the Pharisee and the prayer of the tax collector couldn't be more different. I'm great in myself. Thanks, God. Versus, God, I can't do anything without you. One acknowledges need. One rejoices in self-sufficiency. One makes room for grace. The other has no room for grace. One is true. The other is an illusion, a rationalization, and ultimately a lie. Humility demands truth. It is the understanding of who we are and how much we are in need of God and therefore, how much God can accomplish in us. The person who embraces Christian humility gives themselves over to a life of gratitude because we know that despite everything, God never tires of forgiving our sins. God never tires of the outpouring of grace, transforming us more and more to be like Christ the Son of God. That's a line you'll hear in the sacrament of confirmation. Christ never tires of welcoming the penitent in confession. When we, like the tax collector, have to sit with those things that humiliate us, and we have to reveal them before the Lord, those sins that we fall into for no good reason other than habit, those sins which over time have just come to be second nature to us, those sins that shame us, those addictions that humiliate us and leave us powerless, those are the things we would rather hide from everyone else in our lives. We'd rather hide them from ourselves, but there is no hiding them from God. That's humility. To know that that is, well, part of what's true about us. And yet acknowledging that, opening that, before the transformative grace of Almighty God is the only thing that truly addresses that wound, that truly forgives that sin, that is true, truly the balm that takes away that pain. Humility demands truth. Humility mirrors the sacrificial love of our Savior. The love of God revealed in Christ Jesus is revealed in its clearest form, its clearest expression, in the love of the cross, where his love is literally spread open on the, wound, on the wood of the cross, where he holds back nothing for us and for our salvation, not even the last drop of his own life's blood. But as much as that is the starkest revelation of love, in all of its brutality and all of the violence of that scene, love stands sovereign. It is a love that does not even there hold back. 
it continues to give. And so we draw forward Sunday after Sunday, some for the very first time, to our Lord's altar to receive Holy Communion. That is the givenness of Christ's love. As if the humiliation of the cross wasn't enough. He who existed before time began, the word spoken by the Father over the chaos to bring forth life and light, he who is the author of all of us and the creator of all that is, gives himself, well, in bread that almost takes more of an act of faith to acknowledge it as bread than to acknowledge it as the body of Christ. And to wine transformed into his saving precious blood that isn't very good wine. If I were God, I would not choose to give myself in that way. I'd want something a little better. <laughs> but that's the point. Thank God, I'm not God. Because that kind of givenness of love, that's humility. And if that's the love that you and I have been baptized into, if that's the kind of love that you and I have received in the gift of the Holy Spirit at Confirmation, if that's the kind of love you and I grasp and consume every time we come up for Holy Communion, then that is the kind of love with which we must also love one another. A love that does not hold back. A love that is given. A love that doesn't count the cost. A love that does not sit in its own splendid isolation but reaches out constantly for the good of others. That's humility. Because that's the kind of virtue, that's the kind of life, that's the kind of Christianity that is open to the creative possibility of God. What can God accomplish in me? That's the humility of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To know that all she had to do was say yes, but what a yes it was. A yes that would cost her again and again and again. A yes that would alienate her from her family. A yes that would see her standing before the most brutal scene a parent could imagine, watching the public murder of your only son. And yet, what does she say to her cousin Elizabeth in the Magnificat? The Almighty One has looked on the lowliness of his handmaid and has done great things in me. The yes allows God to work. If we experience from time to time that dryness in prayer, if we experience the absence of God, if we don't experience His grace working deep in our lives, I would venture to say, my brothers and sisters, the problem is not with God. The problem is in us. And hence that need for the daily examination of our consciences. What is blocking? What barriers do we put in place? How do we wrap ourselves in cloaks of, of illusion and rationalization that do not allow the truth, the goodness, and the beauty of Almighty God to work in our lives? You see, always this love that is given to us in the sacraments is not only for our own salvation and our own transformation and grace, but so that through us, God can save the world. That is the great mystery of our faith. St. Paul was not just using a metaphor when he says the church, the assembly of the baptized, is the body of Christ in the world. We are who makes Christ present. We are the ones who carry his grace into the world so that the world might be saved. So that in every authentic experience of humility from us, the Christian people, the world out there, our family, our friends, our co-workers, you know, people at the grocery store, learn something about who God is. Out of every authentic experience of love, the world not only learns something about who God is, but experiences something of who God is. And that's what transforms hearts. That's what draws people into the household of faith. That 
my young friend, is what you are being confirmed into today. The Holy Spirit is given to you. It's the, again, that same thing. God who is given. He gives himself to you freely and completely in a gift of the Holy Spirit that will never leave, that will never depart. It's like Pentecost. He comes over you today in the symbolic act of a hand that touches your head, oil anointed on your forehead, but that seal of his gift remains with you forever, making you more like Christ, making his presence alive in you and charging you, making you his soldiers to go out into the world, strengthening you so that you might bear witness to him. Sometimes we who have been confirmed bear witness to the Lord by what we say. More often than not, we bear witness to the Lord by how we say it and by what we do. That is the authentic authenticity of the Christian life. That is the authenticity of our faith. It is built stone upon stone to create that great temple of the house of God. And the stones, my friends, are us. We can be living stones or we can be dead ones. It's really up to us. And embracing things like the humility of the gospel, that's not just something that's added on, you know, extra credit after you, you know, believe the faith or something like this. Then you can start acting in this way. It's not for the perfect. It's not just for those who have given themselves in priesthood and religious life. God knows that, you know, Father and I could tell you many, many stories of priests not always living this way. But nevertheless, it is that fundamental attitude, that fundamental disposition of heart to which we are all called. To live humility is to be authentically Christian. And to be authentically Christian is to be evangelizing, making new disciples for Christ. No, it might be what people think, but no. Humility is not becoming something less. Humility is not closing your mouth when you should speak. Humility is not drawing back from the world or drawing into yourself. Ultimately, the humility of the gospel, that to which the Lord not only calls us, but into which he inserts us by a direct act of his grace, is not making you less of who you are, but it is recognizing exactly who you are both in terms of that need to open yourself daily before the Lord and say, fill me because I am so empty. Heal me because I am so wounded. But also to make you courageous and bold before the world. Bold to say yes and to allow God's grace to work through you to save your souls and to save the souls of all those very many people God places in your life each day. So, dear brothers and sisters, say yes. Say yes to the grace of God. Say yes to our Lord Jesus in Holy Communion, who comes to you today. Say yes to the gift of the Holy Spirit, who conforms you to be more like Christ, the Son of God. In saying yes, in standing humbly before the Lord, He will do mighty things in and through us. And we can join our prayer to that of Mary. Be it done unto me according to your word. And he will.
customary of the conferral of the sacraments, for those who will receive them to renew their faith and the promises that were made at their baptism. And so, those of you to be confirmed, I ask you, do you here in the presence of this congregation renew the solemn promises and vows which were made at your baptism? There we go. <laughs> do you therefore renounce the devil and all his works, the vain pomp and glory of the world, with all the covetous desires of the same, and the sinful desires of the flesh, so that you will not follow nor be led by them? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried? He descended into hell, the third day rising again from the dead, who ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence who shall come to judge the quick and the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Do you profess this faith? Will you endeavor to keep God's holy will and commandments, and to walk in the same all the days of your life? I ask the congregation also, please, now to stand. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to thee. Dearly beloved, in holy baptism, God the Father gave these his adopted sons and daughters new birth to eternal life. Let us therefore now pray and pour out to him our prayers that he may give them the Holy Spirit to strengthen them in their faith and to anoint them that they may be more like Christ the Son of God, that they may continue his forever, daily increase in the Holy Spirit more and more until they come unto God's everlasting peace.
defend, O Lord, these thy servants with thy heavenly grace, that they may continue thine forever, and daily increase in the Holy Spirit more and more, until they come into thy everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Seeing now, dearly beloved, these our brothers and sisters regenerate and grafted unto the body of Christ's church by baptism and now the seal of the Holy Spirit. Let us give thanks to Almighty God for these benefits. And with one accord, we will make our prayers unto him, that they may lead the rest of their lives in accordance with the grace they have now received. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. O God, almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy world, word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to Francis our Pope, to the College of Bishops, and to all sacred ministers, especially Father Holiday, that they may, be, may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true word and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. To all thy holy people, give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation, and those who have received the sacrament of confirmation, and those who will receive Holy Communion for the first time, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Confirm, O God, what thou hast wrought in us, and preserve in the hearts of thy faithful people the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that they never may be abashed to confess Christ crucified before the world, and that they may ever keep his commandments, who liveth and reigneth, world without end. Amen. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to mercifully to be merciful and to grant them fullness of joy in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of all the saints, that with them we may, we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory. Amen. Amen. Ye that through truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, are in love with charity of your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and of all men, we acknowledge you and well our manifold sins and wickedness, which we do not
God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all of our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavenly laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice in thy hands with the grace and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. O Lord, who hast ordained the sacrifice to be the propitiation for our sins and the means whereby of thy loving kindness we are restored unto salvation, mercifully grant that these our oblations may be acceptable in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your heart. the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. We should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who by water and the Holy Spirit hast made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth thy glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying. Vouchsafe, O God, we beseech thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, approved, and accepted, a perfect and worthy offering that it may become for us 
the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes lifted up to heaven, unto thee God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Likewise, after supper, taking also this goodly chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, he blessed and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Thank you. 
to call. And at the intercession of the blessed and glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with thy blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and with Andrew and all the saints, favorably grant peace in our days, that by the help of thine availing mercy, we may ever both be free from sin and safe from all distress. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to thine apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of thy church, and grant to her peace and unity according to thy will, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with our spirits.
almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou hast given us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, that thus assure us thereby that we could bring him in towards us, and that we are very much more than the physical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to the Lord and the Gospel kingdom, and the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son.
Thank you. 